I'm Kelly Deacon. I'm a pyrographic artist. I've been a member of the Art Society for about 12 years now. Like most artists, I've been doing artwork since basically I could hold a crayon. I've tried all different kinds of art mediums. It happened upon burning about uh, 2008. Uh, Reg was a forestry engineer and used to go out into the woods and collect, you know, the fungus and bits of wood and different interesting things for me. And I started burning on them with um, an old school burner, you know, like we had when we were in, mm -hmm. like when we were younger, little kids mm -hmm. kits that we used to get. Nature is basically the thing that I like to do most because that's what I'm most familiar with. Um, you know, I'm surrounded by nature all around me and uh, that's what I love the most is, is doing nature. My brothers had those little kits when we were growing up. I dug it out of some stuff that I had and just started tinkering around on one of the conks because I thought they were kind of cool and I'd seen people paint them, but I just kind of wanted to go a different route. I just started playing around with it and then it just kind of morphed into people going, hey, that's really cool. Can you do one for me? Or can you do this? Or can you do that? And Usually when people ask me if I can do something, I say yes before I really think about it. So I, I can't necessarily do everything they ask, but I will definitely give it a good try. After he saw me do a few designs, Reg said uh, I needed a better tool. So he actually invested in this razor tip wood burner for me. Lots of people ask about my tool. It's a Canadian company, so it's it's uh, easy to support them and say, hey, yeah, it looks like a pen. I have different tips that I can use and different temperatures I can put it at in order to use it. So basically it's just like using a pencil, but I'm just uh, going directly onto the wood or onto the conch. These ones I'm getting ready to do something with but they'll sit here for a little bit till I decide what goes on them. Like this one here, I'm sort of thinking an eagle, but then yesterday when I was looking at it, due to the lump right here, I'm kind of thinking, well, maybe it's gonna be frogs instead. Because I work with such rough canvases, they I let them tell me what they want to be. The, these are the fungus that come off the trees. They actually only come off dying trees. They do not grow on living trees. They would generally grow this way. For some reason, they started getting named artist conks. And I think because quite a few people were painting on them. So you actually can find a lot of people who still do paint on them. I thought, well, if somebody can sketch on there, then I can certainly burn on there and hopefully make a more permanent design. Hardwoods are the hardest. Like a cherry wood is quite difficult to burn on. Cedar is by far the best wood to burn on. It's softer and it's easier to work with. And if you haven't burned too deep in it, you could actually sand it lightly to restart again. So it's not too bad. I rarely ever pre-draw my design. Um, I do pre-draw when I do the half and halves because I have to, because you know I'm trying to make them look exactly like the other half. With the designs on the conks and wood designs like the bear up there, um, I just start burning and, and end up burning the design into them. So that's the problem with, with pyrographics is if I make a mistake, I either have to change the design completely or I have to junk it and start over again. So with the conks, that's not really an option because if I mess up a conch, I can't redo the conch and I won't have the same one again because none of them are the same. So the half and a half came about because, um, well, Karen, she's uh, Karen Gamble. She's timepieces photography in Tofino and also a very good friend of mine. We wanted to do a collaboration together. So we ended up contacting Roland Art Center in Port Alberni and they said, yes, we qualified to do a show together. So it was gonna be my burning and her photographs. I said, well, why don't we do one that's half and half? And she's like, well, what do you mean? And I said, 
you know, your photograph and my burning, what if we, you know, do combine it so that we've got something joint together, so a good collaboration and not just our work in the same room. And she liked that idea and so did other people. So we started producing these. So the first three we produced um, sold right away. And so now we are trying to get a collection happening so that we have enough and then we're going to partner up with Ian at Hartwood and do a half and half show with him. So, and kind of hoping that he'll do some kind of half and half meal to compliment it. Surf and turf or something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that that was um, that was a really good thing and a lot of fun and uh, I think people really really like those. That wood is um, rejected guitar blanks that came from uh, somebody in Port Alberni. So I have quite a huge stack of them, and the wood's quite thin. And so I was trying to decide what to do with it, but I wanted to do something more than just, you know, a basic picture on a, on a board. So I got this idea to do a fan. So the first one I did was the cougar fan. I called it cougar country. So inside the cougar's body is the country that a cougar might run around in. So, and the face, the portion of the face came from, I went to visit my sister and her brother-in-law had a cougar pelt. It had the head on it and when he showed it to me, I got shivers through my whole entire body and I just like went like this. I feel like he was looking at me and so of course that face stuck with me. So that's the face. And the other one is called Eagle Estuary. I don't know how easy it is to see, but inside the eagle is some landscape and food that the eagle would eat. So there's like um, fish in there, there's snakes in there, there's some rabbits in there, there's some crab in there, some waves at the bottom. So I want to do one more that would be kind of in between the two sizes. I, I mapped out the pattern, but I just have not got there yet. Selling it is kind of the main goal, but at the same time, I would rather see my artwork with other people who are going to appreciate it as opposed to say, just sitting in my studio um, and just for me to look at all the time. So I probably gift out about 50% of what I do and sell about 50% of what I do. I gift away basically what people have shown interest in and most often say they can't afford it. So um, quite a few times there'll be a piece and I know the person who said they really loved it doesn't have the money to pay for it. So you know, maybe six months down the road or something, then I will gift that piece to them. So it's, yeah, that to me is pretty fulfilling. When I was still living in Port Alberni, before I moved back here, I did, um, well, organized, I think it was three family and friends art shows. For them, it was their first time ever showing out in public. One of the big parts about art for me is to help encourage other artists help other people get their stuff out there, get known, just uh, to feel comfortable to present their stuff out in public. I would like for one to um, get one of the first or second prizes in the Fusion Art Shows, which is an online company. They do, you can submit art to different callouts they do. I've submitted to them a few times and the eagle there won honorable mention in one, and my wolves, which was done on a piece similar to this, won a third place, but that one's sold now, so it's not here. I really want to see a first or a second place, with, so I want to come up with something really fantastic for that. I would also like an entry to be accepted into the Salt Spring Island um, National Competition which I've submitted a few times, but haven't made the cut yet. Well, I'll just say yet, because hopefully I will. And uh, if I could do something for the community, I would like to 
try and help Praz find a space that we could have a gallery and have a gathering space for artists. So that's um, what I would like for the community. The other two are more selfish because <laughs> that's what I want for me. I mean, I love that we have the Orange Door Gallery right now and that, that was a great incentive brought together by some of the board members and now we're actually making really good use of that and it's making the members, the artists, very happy. People like it that they have a place where they can say, hey, I'm going to bring my artwork in there and hang it up. And, you know, I think that's that's really encouraging. But it would be really nice to have a bit of a larger space. I think artists need to be able to connect with other artists. And most artists spend most of their time alone at home or in their own space creating. They don't get together with a group of friends and say, hey, let's all go paint or let's all go take photographs or let's all go burn or, you know, let's all go do something. But uh, I think if there was a space where it could be just a drop in and and uh, get together and, and work on whatever you happen to be working on and, and have room for them to be able to leave stuff if they want to because for an artist it's really hard if you have to pack everything up every time and then bring it back out pack it up and bring it out and, you know that's that's a tough thing to do most artists if they're in the midst of working on something they want to leave it hmm. out they want to see it have it visible where you can just go and look at it and go oh yeah gee i'm gonna add this to it or i'm gonna add that to it or or somebody else, to, you know, if you're working in a group, somebody else say, oh, well, what if you added a touch of color here or, you know, something like that. I started adding a touch of color to my conks because Suzanne Riles, one day when she was looking at my work, she said, um, why don't you try adding a touch of color? She said, I think people might like that. And so I did, and she was absolutely right. So it really helps to have other people you know, look at your stuff and, and just get a little bit of input and move forward with it. That piece right there that you're looking at is called um, Nature Rising. And that was created for a show in Port Alberni and it was based on a, um, a quote by Henry David Thoreau. It was, what would human life be without forests or natural cities? So that was my take on it. So the concrete is what we would have if we didn't have forests. And the hands coming out of the concrete is people realizing that we need the forests. And then the conch represents the forest. And it actually swivels. So on one side should be um, ocean and sky and the other side plants well with the first lockdown um i became unmotivated completely i didn't want to be in my studio i thought what's the point there's nowhere for me to show my artwork i can't take it anywhere nobody's out nobody's buying it we can't do shows because doing shows is by far my favorite so I was really unmotivated, but I got some really awesome wood from Tranquil Salvage out of Tofino. They had saved a couple really nice big slabs for me. And so I got the slab and I started, okay, well, you know, I'm going to sand this down. I'm going to get it all prepped and ready for what I don't know. A design came into my head and then I'm like, oh, well, I think I'll do this all in writing. And so what happened is I just, uh, I contacted somebody at the district office. I got a list of all the businesses that they had recorded. I had a list of businesses that I knew that weren't um, registered with the community and plus names of, you know, a few people, some volunteer groups. And uh, I just decided, well, I'm just going to start this and see what happens with it. I contacted Lori Gerke and I said, would you be interested in putting this plaque up at the co-op? I said, I'm just going to gift it to the community. That took me 10 months and it got me back into my creativity. It helped me get back to being creative where I kind of felt like I had lost all of that. So it's not just a gift for the community, but it was a gift to myself so that I could be creative again and carry on with what I love. So